We're going to talk about scarring alopecias or cicatricial, which is the fancier medical term for scarring alopecias, which is a fancy word for hair loss. So it's scarring hair loss. This is also oftentimes more of a patchy type of hair loss that can occur due to different types of conditions. Just like in patchy hair loss that is involved in non-scarring hair losses, there can be an inflammatory type and a non-inflammatory type. And breaking that down will help sort of delineate those categories a little bit more easily for you to understand. But first of all, let's understand what exactly is a scarring hair loss or a cicatricial alopecia. Essentially what this is, it's a type of hair loss in which there is scarring uh, in, the, in the hair follicle that will lead to permanent hair loss and can be considered a type of real uh, hair loss emergency because you've got to salvage this before you actually lose that hair that won't regenerate and then you've got the only option over time is possibly to transplant or create a scalp reduction in that area to get rid of that area of, of hair loss and even that may not be that great in terms of transplantation because there may be a limited blood supply etc. The scarring that occurs that is permanent when you're talking about a permanent scarring alopecia or hair loss is in the region of the permanent hair. Remember in the video that we talked about the embryology and anatomy that the upper portion of the hair follicle that extends from the bulge area or isthmus up to the opening of the, or, or the skin surface is the permanent component. If that part is damaged, there is not going to be hair regrowth ever, and that's going to be gone. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a, a scarring hair loss in that region. In terms of the different types of scarring hair losses, uh, we're not going to get to the really scientific types of, of divisions in some of the recent classification schema, but something a little bit more easily understandable, and we divide it into just simply inflammatory and non-inflammatory. The types of inflammatory hair losses, the two most classic ones are a discoid lupus, discoid lupus erythematosus and lichen plano polaris. These each count for about 30 to 40 percent of the cases of, of scarring alopecias. And discoid lupus erythematosus may present just in the scalp or could have systemic um, components as well. And essentially how this presents would be uh, red papules that begin to become more scaly and thick. And you can have these confluence of these large scaly uh, red pap, uh, uh, excuse me, scales that over time start to flatten out, become hypopigmented and atrophic in nature. Or in other words, just sort of uh, loss of, of, it looks like the sh shiny white that looks like you've really lost some of the structure integrity to that to that scalp region and um, th that looks very similar in presentation to lichen plano polaris. You need a scalp biopsy to make that distinction. I don't do the biopsies. I'm not a dermatologist. I refer that out to a dermatologist if I'm suspicious of a scarring alopecia or scarring hair loss. And these are just, this, this video is more intended for you to understand sort of the general ideas, not to give you a diagnosis. And certainly I'm not going to be the one to, re to treat, be treating these conditions. The uh, other type, lichen plano polaris, is basically lichen planus, a type of lichen uh, disease that occurs in the scalp region that looks very similar oftentimes to discoid lupus. The difference is, of course, you're going to find lichenoid changes in your, in your scalp biopsy. Also, there's going to be more of a peripheral um, uh, change of hyperkeratosis or thickening in the periphery of the lesion instead of the center, which is more indicative of lupus. Another type of inflammatory uh, scarring alopecia is folliculitis decalvans. This one is a little bit different in the sense that it's more pustular. There can be a lot of pus and, and a lot of large papules in this area instead of scaliness. And the reason for this is that what's happening is that your scalp is actually creating an autoimmune uh, attack of the hair cells. Um, and or it's really just, a, it's, it's, it's to the to the uh, to the bacteria in the in the scalp, and so anti-staphylococcal or anti-staph aureus type of medications can be helpful in combination with with rifampin in terms of treatment and eradication. And sometimes the only way you can take care of it is to uh, actually use laser hair removal to uh, to eradicate the source of the problem, which is the hair follicle uh, getting infected. Um, it's often more common in African Americans. And another condition, uh, now we're going to switch over to the, uh, non, the, the scarring alopecias that are non-inflammatory in nature. There's two principal ones. We're going to start with follicular degeneration syndrome, which is like folliculus to Calvin's in the, in the central portion of the back scalp region, but it really doesn't have any inflammatory component to it. In fact, 
um, it was thought that the African Americans that had this type of hair loss in the central scalp were actually caused by hot combs that they're users, as hot oils and hot combs that they were using to style the hair. But they've been they found that actually follicular excuse me follicular degeneration syndrome say that three times fast uh, really is not necessarily associated with hot hot comb use in the African American. The uh, other type of more uh, classic, the classic more common type of a non-inflammatory scarring alopecia is something called pseudopalata Brock. Brock is spelled B-R-O-C-Q. The late 19th century, Brock found that people could have this, what's classically seen as footprints in the snow. It looks like footprints in the snow across here, the little hair loss. And the term palade is a French term for alopecia areata. And as you know, pseudo means false. So it's, it looks like alopecia areata, but it's not because it truly is scarring. There's no follicular ostea. So it, it's completely different from the non-scarring uh, alopecia areata. That is alopecia areata is non-scarring and pseudopalata is scarring. Some people believe that since pseudopalata is completely non-inflammatory, in nature that it represents an end stage of some of the inflammatory scarring hair losses like uh, like in plantar polaris or uh, discoid lupus erythematosus but it's now thought to be a unique type of category the pseudopalata brock and then finally there is a, a term that Sperling coined called uh, central centrifugal alopecia and part of the uh, central cent centrifugal scarring alopecia which is thought to be just sort of a, a large term used to describe scarring hair losses that occur in the vertex crown that, that expand in a, in a symmetrical fashion and the, and the types of hair losses that fall into this category include folliculitis decalvans which has a predilection for the back area here, pseudopalata as we mentioned which is a non-inflammatory type of uh, scarring hair loss and uh, follicular degeneration syndrome, which also is non-inflammatory, that may has, has a higher predilection for this region here um, in the vertex and crown. That's a quick summary. Most of it gets quite technical, and most people don't suffer from scarring alopecias. I think it's more of an intellectual interest, but if you have it, clearly it's something you need to seek a dermatologic uh, consultation, evaluation, and treatment, uh, as I am a surgeon, but I thought it would be interesting for you to, guys to understand a little bit about the categorization of scarring alopecias.